Hi guys, I'm Richard McFarlane. I've been following Hyperloop for nearly six years now. It's an amazing concept. It could give very short travel times between city centres with very low energy consumption. We've all seen the media hype about travelling in a vacuum tube with no air resistance. But how does it work? What actually makes it move? There are three choices of levitation for Hyperloop, air skis, maglev and wheels. In this video, I'm going to discuss the merits of each, look at what's been done so far and suggest a better way to make progress. Hyperloop One is the biggest commercial company with a $300 million budget. They originally researched air skis, then maglev, achieving 384 kilometers per hour in 2017. They haven't announced any technical progress for over a year. VAR Hyperloop has entered the SpaceX pod competition, originally with air skis, then maglev, then their pod with wheels ran at 470 kilometers an hour. It's a remarkable achievement for a low budget student team. HTT are often in the media but don't seem to be doing any technical development. They have built a big pod shell, supposedly made of the sci-fi material vibranium. They claim to be using induct track maglev, developed about 20 years ago and never tested at speed. So what's happened with the air skis that Elon Musk first proposed with Hyperloop Alpha? The compressor and air skis would have worked at normal pressure like the British and French hover trains tested in the 1960s, but in a vacuum with 1,000 times less air, there would never be enough airflow to lift the pod. This whole air ski thing has been really frustrating. It's quite a simple calculation to show that it could never work. We've all had to wait for two to three years for the research projects to find out the hard way. With air skis failing, Hyperloop researchers have now decided to use maglev. Once again, they've committed to one technology without really looking at the alternatives. Are they making the same mistake again? So we'll compare maglev and wheels to see which one is most suitable for Hyperloop. But first, let's see what Elon Musk thinks. I'd probably advocate um, wheels and uh, and, <laughs> it, and, and then you can sort of say, okay, it's working. Essentially, if you're, if you're trying to create a company, uh, it's important to uh, limit the number of miracles in series. Um, <laughs> and, and so you want to you start off with uh, something that's, that's the most doable and then, and then expand from there. Um, Hyperloop needs to go really fast. So which technology is capable of the highest speeds? The Shanghai Transrapid Maglev operates a passenger service at 430 km per hour. The fastest conventional train is the TGV test train that did 575 km per hour. The Japanese SC Maglev achieved 603 km per hour. This is a research project that has never gone into passenger service. The Blue Flame rocket car in 1970 achieved an amazing 1,014 kilometers an hour using Goodyear pneumatic tires. The fastest is Thrust SST at 1,228 kilometers an hour. Their ultimate speed was limited by the sound barrier, not their metal wheels. So we can see that wheels can perform reliably at double the maximum speed of the fastest maglev. Maglev doesn't have mechanical friction, but does use a lot more energy than wheels. The Chinese Shanghai Transrapid uses 2.6 times as much power as high-speed rail. The Japanese SC maglev uses four to five times more power than the Shinkansen trains, according to technical reports. Modern car tyres are very efficient with a 300 to 1 lift to drag ratio and racing bicycle tyres are better at 500 to 1. Some low cost maglev systems suffer from very high drag. One form of passive levitation uses permanent magnets against an aluminium rail. 
but it requires a lot of thrust, being quite similar to eddy current braking. It requires a powerful pusher to make it move. This system has been proposed by Hyperloop One and HTT and would consume about 10 to 15 times more energy than pneumatic tyres. The high cost maglev systems using coils in the track are better, but none are as efficient as wheels. Traction is not often discussed, but it's very important as it's a major cause of maglev's high energy consumption. A high speed pod will use a lot of energy to reach full speed. We need good efficiency to recover most of the energy on braking. Maglev uses linear motors. The circular ring around the motor is rolled out along the full length of the track, which could be hundreds of kilometers long. Traction efficiency is compromised because it's too expensive to use the exotic materials and precision construction of a normal motor. But the biggest source of inefficiency for linear motors is the size of the air gap. They need plenty of clearance to avoid contact at high speeds, with the pod needing to float as the tube can't be perfectly straight. Linear motors are 70% efficient or less compared to conventional motors driving wheels which are 90% efficient. So linear motors waste three times as much traction energy. Hyperloop must be cost competitive. Construction of the steel vacuum tube will be expensive, may be comparable to a high speed rail line. With wheels, there's no extra expense as they will run directly on the inside of the tube. However, maglev requires multiple sets of coils along the full length of the route for levitation, stability and traction. Maglev systems cost two to three times that of high speed rail, which is why they have never been successful. There's simply no point in developing Hyperloop if nobody can afford to build it. How hard is it to develop the technology? Wheels have been tested at Hyperloop speeds. We just need to develop them for reliability and wear life. Testing will be low cost because most research can be done on a rolling road rather than a high speed track. Maglev is really difficult. As Elon says, it requires a series of miracles to make it possible. Over the last 70 years, there have been dozens of projects that have simply failed with nothing achieved. But there have been two research projects, each costing billions of dollars, which have built impressive high-speed maglev trains using different technology. The Japanese SC maglev, after 50 years of development, has failed to build or license a single operating system. The maglev train in Shanghai is in passenger service, but only one 30 kilometer track was ever built. And Transrapid, the Germany company that designed it, closed in 2008. We all want to see Maglev finished. We want to ride on it ourselves. We don't want it to be an endless research project that never reaches a sensible conclusion. Mechanical wear is the one feature where maglev has the advantage. This is an important challenge for wheels and the main focus for research. It's inevitable that there will be running expenses due to wear of the wheels, but we need to minimize the effect on the overall operating expenses. Hyperloop is the most extraordinary project. Why would anyone choose air skis and maglev instead of the obvious choice of wheels? Maybe the attraction of hyper-technology? Air cushion and maglev are not novel futuristic concepts. They have both been researched for a very long time. The reason you don't see them operating is because they don't work very well and are too expensive. So now we'll look at how to develop wheels that are suitable for high-speed transportation. Steel wheels might seem the obvious solution but they're not suitable. Railway wheels would fly apart at hyperloop speeds. Also, they have low grip, 
giving slow acceleration and poor braking, and the harsh metal-to-metal -metal contact causes wear of the wheels and rails. Aluminium wheels running on a soft surface like polyurethane would work reasonably well, but the PU liner could cause maintenance problems. Surprisingly, pneumatic tyres are the best solution. The tyre is an incredibly strong structure. It can run at 1,000 kilometres an hour using the normal construction of polyester fibres and steel, but with very thin rubber. With Kevlar and carbon fibre, the tyre would be structurally capable of running at 2,000 kilometres per hour. Since John Dunlop's invention 140 years ago, the pneumatic tyre has been developed for an extraordinary range of uses. 100 tonnes capacity for dump trucks, high impact for aircraft, extreme speed and grip for dragsters, long life and reliability for trucks. 50 years ago, Goodyear made tyres that were reliable at 1,000 kilometres an hour and tyre technology has improved immensely since then. The Venturi Buckeye Bullet. This is an all-electric car built by Ohio State students and it has done 550 kilometres an hour. How fast would this go if it was running on a hard surface instead of loose salt and in a vacuum tube with no air resistance? A thousand kilometres an hour? Maybe a lot faster. Surely the sensible plan for Hyperloop would be to start with technology that works and then develop it for transportation. How do we keep the passengers comfortable when cornering? Aircraft do it by banking to the correct angle so the passengers feel upright but with some extra g-force. Wheels can do the same. The pod can run up the side of the tube at exactly the right angle so that high speeds can be maintained in curves. This would actually be really difficult with maglev. We don't need any dramatic new inventions, just a combination of existing technology to suit the purpose. We can reduce the rotational stress and increase the speed with a large diameter tyre, 1.5 metres, that's 5 feet or larger. We need hard rubber to reduce wear, of course we don't need wet grip like road tyres. The structure needs to be quite thin and flexible using modern materials like Kevlar or carbon fibre. There is a support ring for run-flat security. This also helps internal cooling because of the lack of outside airflow to keep the tyres cool. The running surface is important. A polished steel tube wall might be ideal, but we can research better options. It's possible that a thin film of special lubricant on the tube would reduce tyre wear and still allow adequate grip. OK, these are my suggestions. Hyperloop could make much more progress if everyone makes sensible, practical decisions about the fundamental technology. The first company that does serious research on high-speed transportation wheels will be in a very commanding position. Hopefully Hyperloop will be built one day wouldn't it be great to own the key technology? Thanks for watching. By the way, I've covered a lot of topics here in a limited time. My website has a lot more information or feel free to email me for any technical discussions.